Can you well, think we're of only going to do one part today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are, John and Lynn Spencer. Uh, actually, together we started Coastline Calvary Chapel in 1983, but we're not here to talk so much about the church as we are here to talk about parenting from a biblical perspective. So Lynn and I have three children, mm -hmm. and from those three children, we now have, well, probably in a day or so, will be 13 grandchildren. So we're not experts on parenting. Uh, we have uh, been blessed by the Lord, though, with three children who right. serve great kids. great kids who love the Lord and have great families. And so we're just going to talk a little bit from Scripture and with one another about parenting and how it works and how it doesn't work and how it has kind of, I guess you would say, uh, unfolded in our life. Yeah. So I wanted to read a scripture to start off with. It's from the book of Psalm, and it is Psalm, um, well, 127. And I'll start in the middle of it. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, and like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man, or you could say woman, who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. So it starts off by saying, children are heritage. And I know you, Len, we've been married for, what, 43 years? Yes, it'll be 44 years, I think, in November. 44 years in November. So heritage is a big thing for you. Heritage with your kids, your grandkids. So, so Making we, memories. Making memories. So, yeah. so when we talk about, you know, this passage right. here, children are a heritage from the Lord. What comes to your mind? What comes to your heart when you hear that? Well, that uh, we have a past together and we're building a future mm -hmm. together with our kids and hopefully for our kids yeah. as unto the Lord. I think that kids come into our world as a gift from the Lord and they're only on loan we only have them for such a short period of time but the enrichment that they bring to your life you can't even imagine until you walk through it and the older you get the more you see how much a gift and a heritage that they are and the Lord loves kids that's why he gives them to us he gives yeah. us great presents and each one of our kids were a gift and each of them were very different from one another but so when you think of the word heritage yes. and there can be a good heritage that right. can be a bad heritage you know as you look back on life right. some people leave behind a terrible heritage not so much talking about kids but a string of things that occurred in their life right. or that they cause you go wow that's not a good heritage so in order or to legacy would that be the same legacy word? Yeah. heritage yeah, kind, kind of the same it. thing so uh, in order to leave a heritage that is good and specifically talking about in the context of children right it takes some work yes to leave behind a heritage that you're pleased happy or proud or or feel that honors the lord right so what are some of the distinctives that, that we have to all go through to say you know what we want to leave behind a good legacy or a good heritage with our kids what comes to your mind when you say well what does it take to do that it takes consistency it takes biblical perspective on life, uh, biblical perspective on your marriage, mm. and day by day. It's the thing about raising kids is it's day by day. <laughs> right. And the consistency of being there, mm -hmm. consistency with love and discipline and boundaries right. um, as they grow up as they're growing up, just studying them and finding out one child will respond to discipline as opposed to a different, another child. Like Neil was very different than Ryan. Ryan was very different than Jennifer. And we'd had to learn that they all didn't respond to discipline the same way. Right. Or instruction. True. Yeah. So, you know, the, the goal is like it says here in the scripture, children are a heritage from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is a reward. Right. And, and even though God gives them to you, it's still your responsibility really, to, to kind of 
steward them and to, to make sure that the heritage is something that's honoring to God. Right. And that truly is a reward, not just something that you take for granted. And that's the dailiness of it, because in the midst of it, you don't see it. Mm-hmm. For those early years, all you see is the work. Yeah. The, a lot of the work. mundane work. And you think it's mundane, but really it's building a foundation yeah. and it goes by so quickly. Yeah. But yeah. This writer uses an interesting example about kids. He says they're like arrows in right. the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. And happy is a man or woman who has a quiver full of them. So that's an interesting thing. You know, quiver is that little box <laughs> that you put the arrows in. And I've heard it said, you've heard it said that everyone, um, you know, quiver is different as far as being full. Right. Like, you know, we had three children. You know, our son Ryan has four. Neil has six. And Jenny's about to have three. And mm-hmm. so we don't know where their quiver is, how big it is, how small it is. But ours seem to be full at three. Right. Yeah. That's it's, true. And I think we agreed on that at that time I in our we life. we did. Yeah. So, so we had the, we got the arrows, and it's interesting because um, an arrow is used for hitting, uh, for for in, a target. A target. You can call it anything. I mean, if, if you, whatever you're shooting at, it's still a target. Mm-hmm. And so, when you have those kids or in your quiver, uh, you begin to um, start seeing the end start. Of it. Yeah, with this heritage, with this legacy. Right. What do I want that arrow to hit? Right. And what's the most important target for our kids? So I think the most important target, mm-hmm. obviously, is you, you, you have those kids in your life, in your quiver, in your home, in your heart, and all those different places, is you want to hit the bullseye, which would be a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And so how, how did you feel we went about trying to accomplish that in our family? First of all, just in our relationship together and our relationship with the Lord, that it was real. Right. And that it, it worked. Yeah, it's got to work. It's got to work. And when things would come up for opportunities to teach our kids, like if they lost something or you know, they were looking for something. I think I can remember one time Ryan was looking for a rabbit's foot or something. <laughs> rabbit's foot. Yeah, he lost, a, he lost his favorite rabbit's foot he at school. He lost his favorite rabbit's foot. And I don't know, but I think I remember saying, well, let's just pray about it right. and see if the Lord will help us to find it. And I think he, after looking at a lot of different places and looking around, I think he reached down in the po- his pocket and there it was. Well, actually, if I remember the story How right. How was it? He reached down in his pocket, but it had a hole in it, oh. and it had drifted to the back Maybe of the that jacket. That was it. That was it. And he was, like, shocked. We were because shocked. Because you instituted this prayer thought. Right. And after the prayer, it was found immediately. That's right. That's pretty, pretty Well, cool. there's another great story. Ryan used to go through my jewelry. I don't know where he found my little pearls. Oh, but... no, not that story. <laughs> but he found my pearls. And at that time, a pearl earring was was very valuable and still is very valuable but sure. he would like to poke us with the little end of the piercing he thought that was fun i think he was four or five and he told me where he took it and oh. i said well we need to pray and we need to find because i need to mm. find my pearl earring long story short he took me to a little place where they were playing in the woods with the kids and all of that and we took me to that place and i said we're just going to pray and ask the lord to help us find that pearl yeah. And I pulled it out, and there it was. And I said, look at that, Ryan, the pearl of great price. The Lord help us to find it. So, so Is that not true or false? No, it's true. true, (laughs) It's true. (laughs) We're getting way out there. But you know what? I'm just saying it little, but you would tell Ryan that story today, and he would remember it. He would remember that. And those are the building blocks. Yeah, so the point of the story is trying to hit the bullseye, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and prayer is a big part of that. Right. But you live it out in front of them, the real stuff, right. the yeah. consistency, yeah. the discipline. Yeah, I think that, you know, as we were having these kids grow up in our home and in our lives, that uh, there's quite a few things we try to do. I know we try to do devotions in the morning with right. the kids, kind of make that a way to start the day and, and do it together as a family before right. we go off to school. We found this great book, Devotional with Animals. Yeah, it was interesting. It, it was, was fun. It was real cute. It was just a cute two, three minutes. It story. was on their level. Right. And and we also tried to, I think, as they... As consistently as we could. Yeah, I mean, at different ages, there were different things that you would do. Like, I remember 
when our kids got to a certain age, we started doing something we called a spiritual vacation. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't just go to Disney or to the mountains or somewhere. We found a great camp that was Christian based mm -hmm. and we would take our kids there and kind of Oh, in Colorado. In Colorado yeah. and called Eagle Lake and we put them there for a week and then we would get to a week together. Right. And then the second week of the vacation, we'd come back together as a family, either drive back or go somewhere. And what was amazing yep. was that the kids had, because of the leadership of this camp, they had memorized so much scripture. Oh, I know. That's right. And they had, had so much input that they would just be telling us all these awesome things and it wasn't about star wars it wasn't i mean nothing not that all that's bad as not that that's wrong but here's the thing <laughs> i'd much rather hear that coming from them yeah that was building they in were, their life yeah they were a balance. and i think several of them probably made a deeper commitment to the lord through what we kind of instigated as a spiritual vacation yeah. and i think that was um really healthy for us so that was one of the ways that the arrow was pointed right at that target prayer uh, what we called spiritual vacations and just the things that you know we didn't have a whole lot of screen time back in those right, days but exactly. we did get let them you know pick out a show or something like that that they could watch so not you know it's just the the pressures that are on young parents today and yeah. is just phenomenal because it's just so available we didn't have that availability but uh, one thing we used to do all the time and when we were ever in the car I would have cassette tapes of adventures in odyssey mm. and they have some good you know bible based right virtues and truths yeah. that they would talk about and the kids or um, some of my kids i think neil's kids or ryan's kids or you know they listen to them now um, yeah so, so, so fun so, things yeah, so, age appropriate yeah so once again hitting yes. that bullseye was feeding into their heart and mind sort of relatable right. christian stories when they're driving around in the car what, yes that was uh, totally christian based with great um, sort of moral background right. to it. Sort of just help them that way. It was yeah. just normal yeah. stuff that you did yeah. along the way. Yeah. Um, I, and I think this is not for everyone, but there, there was a time when we made the sacrifice and the decision. Uh, this also kind of relates to the scripture of trying to hit that bullseye. Sure. Was we exposed them to influences outside of just you and I, like the camp, uh, for instance, we made the sacrifice of sending our kids to a Christian school. Yeah. It wasn't a perfect scenario. There's no such thing. But we kind of weighed out the, the you know, different uh, camps, so to speak. Well, we could send them to the public school, you know, mm -hmm. or, or we could put them in the Christian school. And there's pros and cons sure. with each. But we felt like um, that some of the battles we would fight in the public arena versus the Christian arena uh, were different sure. and that we prayed about it and we chose that and, and there, there were times when the kids wanted out right. you know and I remember us coming to this kind of perspective that you know um, the family wasn't a democracy it was a theocracy <laughs> and that God was in charge right and that as long as he had given us these kids like this scripture says as a legacy as a reward mm -hmm that we were responsible for their education, for their home life, for their discipline, for all the things you mentioned earlier, and that we would take their input, right. pray about it, see what the Lord says, and make a decision. Right. And the decision we came back to over and over again was, no, we feel like the Lord wants you to stay in, in the Christian school, in this environment. I think and we took it year by year. We did. You know, I was in the public school system with my with Neil um, right. and Jenny. I did a lot of substitute teaching. I could see what was going on there. It was a great local school. It was perfect for at that time in that season. And just as the years would roll by, we would pray and ask the Lord. I homeschooled a couple of years. And right. It's just you take it one year at a time. There's no blueprint on how to do it. And each, again, child is different. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Lord um, has to really take you take time with the lord and ask him what how do i do this how do i right. how do i speak to this child how do i discipline this child mm -hmm. you know to to be sure we've got their heart yeah you know, we're working on their heart and you know what we had a lot of fun in our house oh yeah i mean you know a lot i think humor was was laughter was prevalent i mean it wasn't like you know 
songs and spiritual songs when they woke up every morning and Bible <laughs> teaching. and Right, it was normal. It was just normal. And yeah. you and I were normal and yeah. they were normal. And bringing them up in the church was a real challenge yeah. uh, because you just wanted them to be normal. I think right. it wasn't until they were in their probably middle school years or late elementary school years that they heard this word PK. You're a PK. Right. And they go, Mom, what's a PK? I said, I don't know. I think it's a preacher's kid, but don't you right. worry about it. You know, yeah. you're just regular like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Um, because that's who Jesus is. He was just normal. And that's what that scripture means to me. Uh, even in Deuteronomy, where it talks about teaching them as you you know, as you rise up and as you go down. and things Just like walk that. along the way. Just walk yeah. along the way and be normal. So I'm very grateful for the most part that w- well, we had our tough times as those te- teenage years rolled mm-hmm. around. And there were some battles that were only won by prayer. Mm. Lots of prayer and crying and lots of staying up late at night and talking to them. But um, yeah. I think that there's always a battle for your kids um, in this generation and in every generation. Yeah, and definitely. I think that um, parents have to have a united front and it's really just the power of prayer in the Lord that helps get them to that target. Mm-hmm. And obviously they make that choice when they get older. I mean, that scripture talking is about you know, train up a child in the way that they go and they will not depart from that. That's not necessarily a promise. It's a principle. And you train yeah, it's them. It's a proverb. Yeah, it's a proverb. So um, you don't always get that guarantee. And they do kind of, you know, they're normal. They're going to make mistakes. And they're, sure. they're going to check out who they are. And I'm just now finding out some of the things they did. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I want to know. And don't want to know all but of them. Back back to that passage, um, just just to kind of summarize some of the things you're talking about. You know, we we um, did certain things to try to build this legacy, to build this heritage, and to hit that bullseye. Hit that target. And it had to do with you know. Uh, exposure to Christian school it had to do with you know having some spiritual life with our kids in the morning it had to do with um, exposing them to to church life right other people and trying to be normal even though you know I'm I'm a pastor and you're a pastor's wife and we're you know trying to build a church while our kids are growing up uh, trying to keep it normal you know being the same at home as Mm -hmm. we were at church but then also having some, I think, some basic parental uh, guidelines that you and I had to learn along the way. Like you mentioned a minute ago, being on the same page together. Right. You know. Uh, Discipline-wise. Discipline-wise. And, and I can remember uh, as the church was growing and I was getting really busy and right. the kids were coming and you were getting real busy with three small children at home. I remember one of the things, and I don't know if I was, I've always stuck to it, but I tried, was I think I told you, like, okay, Lynn, when I get home, I'll be in charge. <laughs> I'll take over the discipline. I'll take over the questions. I'll take, take, take over, you know, instead of them, mom, 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 yeah. mom, I would step through the door and say, okay, dad's home. And I would try to be the guy that would take over, you know, all the requests and, and all the discipline and all that so that you could actually say, I'm off the clock right now. I'm off the clock from the church. Ish. Ish. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all ish. It's all ish. But so, <laughs> but that was one thing I tried to do. Sure. And I think another thing that we tried to do is we tried to come up with some agreed upon child honoring discipline practices that had to do not just with behavior, but also had to do with attitude. And, and I think we'd spelled out pretty clearly for the kids, there are certain things that if you do or you go beyond this boundary, there, there's uh, a consequence. There's yeah. discipline for that. And at that time, we used little Mr. Spoon, oh, we did have Mr. Spoon. a wooden spoon. And so we had a process. They, they knew there were certain things like if you hit someone or, or if you lied or if you stole or if you, if you did something that deserved Mr. Spoon, there was a process in which that occurred. And I remember it was like this. First, you would um, define clearly. You <clears throat> not know, in the fit of anger. Not in the fit. You, yeah, that was one <laughs> of the things. You always yeah. try to respond in control before right, they drove out. you to the place of being out of control. So you're not disciplining in anger. Right. So, I mean, I had to learn that. 
we all have to learn that. Yes, because I used to yell a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just didn't really have to do a whole lot. My no. nickname was Old Yeller. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so we would have this process of okay, this, this is the rule you broke. Right. And then you take the the child to a private place and you explain that to them, and that you know, so, so you're going to have to get a spanking. You're going to. I know. You I know, hated you, that. We all hated it. And the kids would scream bloody murder like it was the end of the world. But here was the process. Here's the rule that was broken. Right. Take you back alone so you're not, you know, being humiliated in front of your siblings or embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, we had the, to learn that. Yeah, yeah. and then, then the, the, the consequence was applied. And then there was restoration. Yeah. There was like a hug and maybe a prayer and say, okay, the price is paid. It's over. Yeah. Now let's go back to normal life. Instead and, of holding uh, weird grudges. Or yeah, something. instead of, you know, being weird about the whole thing, it's kind of like it's done. It's over. Price is paid. You're forgiven. Right. Let's go forth. And uh, those are some simple things that I think we learned from maybe some Dobson books or something like yes. that. That kids need security. Yeah. And one way that they get it is through definable boundaries. Boundaries. Because if you don't have them and there's no consequences for anything. They're looking for their boundaries. They're looking for their boundaries. And in those boundaries, they find their security. Yeah. Okay. If dad says or mom says no, there's a reason. it means no. Right. Not the 15th time they say no. Right. That's because, where you have Because to they will learn, hey, well. Five she, notes. She doesn't really mean no until the 15th time she says it. And then she's going to go crazy. Right. But. The hardest part about disciplining your kids as a parent, as you mentioned earlier, is yeah. you being consistent. Right. Because it's hard. It is you, hard. You're tired or you don't want to deal with it. And, you know, they're they're just, they, they outnumber you for one right. thing. And usually you've got a lot more going on in your heart and mind than just dealing with them every second. Right. So, you know, this, this passage of scripture, mm. this thing of a heritage from the Lord. Certainly, he's the one who gives us the children, right. but we together, based on his word and the, you know, the leading of his Holy Spirit, with the Lord, we build that legacy. We build that heritage. It's a, it's a reward from him when we do, and it's like arrows in, in, in our hand right. that we say, okay, the number one priority is not so much that they become a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, mm -hmm. or that they go to the best college in the world. Um, the number one thing is that they learn that Jesus Christ is real. They can have a personal relationship with it. It's kind of like that verse, seek ye first the mm -hmm. kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added. If we can get them there right. and know it's real, um, Man, you've hit the target. Right. The arrow has. And it, they're all so different. And I think as you're so studying different. your kids and you're yeah. growing them and trying to learn and discipline them and point them in the direction of their gifts and their strengths, yeah. um, helping them to, you know, develop those things, that's part of the target. Yeah. You know, you want them to be well adjusted, independent, God fearing, <laughs> loving adults. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. That they, 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 ha they can, they got they their can own do house. life. They yeah. can do life they can do with life the help of the Lord. With the help of the Lord. The Lord makes all the difference. Yeah. One of the illustrations I've heard about this, this arrow thing is, you know, you take the arrow, you point it towards the target, uh -huh. and you start off, you know, you pull an arrow back yeah. inch by inch. And the further you pull it back, the, the, the more... Shakier it gets. <laughs> <laughs> the quivering. Well, the, the, the more tension is in the yeah. bow. and. And it's kind of like when your kids are at the final stage of about to be released. Yeah. That's when it's the hardest. Right. When they're teens or young adults. And, man, you, you, sometimes you just want to shoot it in the air or in the ground yeah. or just get rid of them. Sure. But you have no. to realize that your goal with that child, with that young adult now, with all you've invested in them is like, yes. you know what? Don't blow it now. You're almost to release the thing. Let it hit the target right. the best you possibly can with the Lord's help. Yeah, because, you know, once they're out of the house and out of your influence, you get to coach from the sidelines still for a little while, yeah. and then they meet their spouse. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other story. That's another whole story. But I yeah. did early on pray for my children's spouses. Yes. And I kind of knew when each one of them had met the one that they're going to mm. marry. And I do really believe that God has given Neil 
and Jenny and Ryan the one that he had for them. Yeah. Which is, and that's a great prayer to yeah. pray with your kids and let them know that you're praying for their spouses. That's true. And I, and I, I think. I used to say I, that to them. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, that we kind of learned together was that um, God would give both of us different insights into our kids. Like, I would kind of know sometimes when yeah. when they were just giving us a bunch of baloney. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I was a little more. I was a little. <laughs> baloney sniffer. I was a little more street smart. Maybe. You were. I was a yeah. little bit more naive. Yeah. And, and, but you were more in tune with their feelings and their emotions. And, and I think that part of parenting is learning how to help each other with that right. kind of stuff. And you would come to me sometimes and you'd say, John, yeah. I think you need to talk to Neil. Yeah. I think he needs to talk to you. And I go, well, what about? And you go, well, he just needs you to go in there and talk to him. Right. Or Ryan or Jenny. Yeah. And, and then there'd be other times when I would say, Lynn, so-and-so is totally lying to you. I go, no, they're not. <laughs> and you would go, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's a total sham. you know. <laughs> and, and you would be so aghast that your kid would lie to you like that. And, but, you know, it was, that's, that's parenting. That's it's working it. together. And, you know, you had different intuition about things, and I did too. And we didn't do it perfectly, but. No, and you know what? I came from a good, strong, uh, family-oriented mom and dad right. my my dad was really like we had family vacations mm -hmm. and uh yeah. family meetings and right. you know things like that that gave me a strong sense of keeping us together and mm -hmm. that we will do things together we'll take trips together yeah. you know those kinds of things yeah. and so that was the thing that i brought to our yeah. marriage and yeah. the consistency which you didn't experience as much and no i didn't uh, come from that type of family my family was uh, very disjointed right. my mom which, was divorced when i was you know, 13, and she she worked hard just to give us some sure, stability. stability and security. So vacations and planning and those stuff. kinds of things weren't even available to us right. when we were kids. And so, so you I'm, were able... I'm thankful for that heritage that I have. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. were able to mirror to me that, John, we need to do this as a family. And right. I never had those family dynamics. Right. So we learned from one another. Right. And, and I think that it was all a part of this, you know, seeing that our kids were a heritage, that they're sure. a reward, and that there was a target for their lives. And I think probably the biggest uh, thing that helps in parenting is that, uh, and, and we would say this uh, a lot to each other and to our kids, that the best thing you can give to your kids is a healthy marriage. Yeah. I mean, they need to know that That's... it's not all about them, That because one day they're going away, yep. and the two of us are gonna hopefully still Looking be together each other, yeah. and like each other. And so we tried to do consistent family nights mm -hmm. and date nights right. so that the kids would not just think it was all about them, but boy, mom and dad like to be yeah. together alone. They like to go out. They like to do things. And I think that's a very a healthy uh, word for parents that yes. don't make your home so child-centered child that when they move out, you're looking at each other going, who are you? Right. you got to maintain that relationship with one another because kids grow up fast and they leave and they leave and then the two of you are there and you want to make sure you still have a life together right and and you want as the scripture says to say well not only do we still have a life together but we've got a legacy we've yeah. got a reward. <laughs> a reward and look we didn't do it perfect but no. it looks like we might have hit the target at least maybe not the, the bullseye <laughs> the lord hit the target we yeah. just got to coach along the sidelines yeah. and do our part yeah. so and it's um it's a great life, trusting the Lord. Yeah. It really is, because the Lord really does make all the difference. Oh, yeah. I was going to, I think, read another scripture. This is an interesting scripture, and this is one that everyone knows. It's from the book of Matthew, chapter 19, when Jesus says this, Let the little children mm. come to me, me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Right. So I think that's a great principle for parents to just realize you know let your kids experience the lord you know i remember um one of my desires was not only the spiritual vacation thing but keeping them in church yeah and as early as possible let them experience the body of christ outside of what you are doing as a church or an individual like 
take them somewhere like a missions trip or if you can afford to go to Israel, let them see that Christianity is bigger than just mom and dad. Right. That there's a whole world out there of people who believe the Bible the same way you do and uh, that it's not just confined, oh, that's just what mom and dad believes. Right. Let them be exposed to to friends who who know the Lord, to adults who know the Lord, to whoever. Fun, fun things that the Lord. Yeah, like like this says, let the little children come to me. Right. And sort of you you, you let them come in in any way you can. We take them to VBSs or whatever it would be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great principle for parents to remember that look for avenues where you can let your children come to the Lord. Yeah, so, so those are some of the things we did. I, I, I think that um, I got one more verse here I was going to read. I'm not going to teach a Bible study or anything mm-hmm. like that. But here's one maybe to kind of wrap things up with. We can talk about this a little bit. Um, in, in 3 John, the epistle of John, I think every, every Christian parent probably knows this verse. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Yeah. And so, you know, and that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, after Boy. after everything else, you know, uh, kids who become this or, you know, uh, have success in that. Mm-hmm. Um, the greatest joy is to see one of your kids or your kids and know have that they genuinely have a relationship with the Lord. Right. And that they're trying to establish that within their own home. Within their own. That's huge. Yeah. That's to me, that's the. That's the cherry on top of yeah. all of it. I mean, and, and that they chose believers as their spouses. Yeah, exactly. And that they didn't compromise with that. Um, that's huge. Yeah, that's very because huge. Because that makes a big difference. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't take it for granted no. one bit. And nor do I take credit for, you know, that we did it all perfect. No, we just, of course not. We kept looking to the Lord and asking him to help us. And I think he looks on our hearts and he does help us with that. And now we have the privilege of grandkids and we're getting to speak into their lives yeah. and pray for them i mean i pray for my grandchildren by name and i'm praying for do their you know stuff. all their names i do i know their names <laughs> i practice it but i do really pray for my because i do believe that for each one of us there was probably a grandmother praying somewhere mm. you know sometimes that we have a little more time on our hands and we have a little bit more knowledge that you know right what's we, out there what's out there and the pitfalls and i pray mm-hmm. for my kids as they're raising their children and the things that they're exposing them to right. and um not cocoons but just with wisdom and discernment yeah. and and i've seen the powerful hand of the lord yeah. working in our family and and i don't take it for granted and the enemy has turned up the heat and i think that prayer is our strongest weapon for for the, our children and our marriages and um the principles that we've been talking about practicing those and yeah and you know this this whole segue into grandparenthood yeah you certainly don't have the you know amount of influence or control or you know, input that you have as a parent but you you do have some and you and you and, a responsibility. and you can be intentional about it. i mean I, I love it when we have all our kids over for easter and i sure. get to share the resurrection story with them with those dumb resurrection they're eggs though well, they're kind of dumb they're cute and you know and I saw a little picture that that's on your scrolling screen at home of me sitting out there. Yeah. And all the kids got there asking questions and stuff. That's that's part of that legacy. Absolutely. That's part of that. Um, it's a get to. Well, it's 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 part of this again. You know, it, it, it's that whole joy to hear that my children walk in truth and that they're children. I mean, I remember one time uh, when Ryan's daughter Piper, who was probably no more than three or four was over to our house maybe even two i don't know and she had a oh, I, she had a book or a bible <laughs> sitting at the yeah, and it was upside down in her lap she was pretending like she could read she was very sure. serious about it oh i know and i said piper uh, what are you reading she goes the bible and i go really well, what does it say she goes she picked it up opened it and it was upside down she goes it says i can have candy right here and I, said, <laughs> I said well we should probably get you some candy so you know th- those are Probably not in the Bible, but at least she was thinking about the Bible and thinking she was reading it. Sure. Those are fun things. So parenting, this is kind of our first segue into it. Just taking a few scriptures, talking about our own personal experiences. Um, It's certainly 
uh, you, you hear this from older people your whole life. Oh, it goes by so quick, yeah. you know, enjoy it. You don't ever believe that? No, not at the time. Not at the time, but here we sit. Here we are. And it, went, and it went by so fast. It did. So here incredibly fast. But we're still in the midst of it, and we're grateful we're that it. we're grateful that we still have a relationship with our kids, that they're believers, that the target They've got great spouses. They got great spouses. Great the target was hit, and um, keep praying. We keep praying and cre- keep thanking the Lord for all that He is and that He's done. Yes. And parenting is work. Yep. But it gives a great, great reward. reward. And I think we used to always say this, and we'll close with this. Yes. Pay now or pay later. Or pay later. Yep. And the price later is so, so much, much higher later. than taking the time to invest now, build those boundaries. Uh, don't try to be their best friend. Be their right. parent. Be their parent. When they get older, you can be their buddy, their friend. It's a lot easier. But while they're young, right. the best thing you can do for them is be their parent. Right. And give them love secure boundaries and point them towards that target mm-hmm. of knowing jesus christ life is short yeah absolutely that's it right are you there okay. you're crying aren't you no. <laughs>